Hunting is about sharing it with friends and family. Getting someone pumped up about going in the woods with a bow in their hand, or whatever weapon you choose. It's about being out there, one-on-one -on -one with your quarry. It's the thrill of seeing things happen right in front of your eyes, real nature. Not the stuff we watch on Discovery Channel, but in-person stuff, live, how it truly is in the wild. That's what this is all about, being there. Yes, don't kid yourself, we all want to bring home an animal. But there's so much more that takes place for us than just the kill. It's being there one-on-one, -on -one, trying to draw back, thinking the animal can hear your heartbeat as your chest is pounding like never before. It's the passion of walking through the woods, knowing the odds are not in your favor, but that don't matter to you. It's all about being there. It's about coming back to camp and sharing the stories with fellow sportsmen and women. Tell them the kids what you saw, but didn't get. It's about seeing something happen for the very first time and knowing what those who don't share in this will never witness unless seeing it on TV. This is all part of making us who we are and possibly molding us for who we bring into this world. We learn from the best teacher of all, and he knows that hunting is the right thing to do. Is that a bear or what? Look at the size of this bear! He's a bruiser. Hi, welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. And this week's show, we've got something really cool planned for you. We are back home in our home state of Illinois. And we're literally hunting out the backyard. I mean, we've got all our stands set up, and we very seldom even make it home during hunting season. But when we You're do... You're not complaining, are you? No, I'm not complaining. Oh, okay. I am not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is, you know, what's cool is, you know, this week we got, we got Mike, Mike Looper <laughs> from Hoyt. <laughs> Crazy Mike is back with us, and I mean, boy, you talk about encounters and close calls. Oh, and my gosh. We just couldn't, you know... You don't want to miss this week's show, because we are bow hunting back home in Illinois. Now, we have permission to hunt all this dinner back here too. We have stands back here which I think... The state of Illinois is filled with all types of terrain that are very conducive for the white-tailed deer to survive and thrive in. From millions of acres of soybean and corn to massive stands of mature oaks. From farm fields to timber ridges, wherever you look, this state has all the right ingredients to generate a super deer population, and one that just might have the trophy you're looking for. Illinois bow season is long. Starting the 1st of October and going through mid-January gives the bow hunters a lot of time to be in the field. With only two long weekends closed due to a shotgun season only, if you have the time, you just might put your tag on a deer of a lifetime. River bottoms, agriculture, ridges, rolling hills, pines, oaks, maples, large tracts of CRP land with natural prairie grasses, hedgerows, thickets, you name it, Illinois has it. Believe it or not, we also have some incredible public hunting land that is some of the finest anywhere and loaded with a pile of deer and wildlife. In the late summer, you can spot a lot of bucks feeding in the beans, and as the fall comes into its season, the deer head to the corn, and here is where they'll stay for a long time. <laughs> or at least until the farmers harvest, and then get ready for the onslaught of activity in whatever timber is in your area. From hedgerow highways to cornfield passageways, the deer know where they need to be at any given time, and then it's up to the hunter to know where they're eating, drinking, and sleeping. At any given time of the year, you are hunting here in Illinois.
Oh my goodness. Okay, what we got here, here's a great, let's get out there, I'll show you. Here's a natural, look at the deer activity here. This is, this is an old logging road, okay? This has always been here. It's just a natural little, like, water hole. Right. Look at the deer activity. Now, look at this. Look at the scrape. You don't want to touch any of this, but look at the height of these branches being broke. Look at the tine scrapes here. See, these deer, these whitetails come in, and sometimes it could be, a, it could sort of throw you off. Sometimes a little, little buck will come in, and even a bigger buck, and they'll stand up. They'll actually stand up. So sometimes it might throw you off. I was going to say, that looks really tough. Yeah, but a lot of times a little buck can't scrape up in there, you know what I mean? That's showing you that, that for, it's good sizable branches that are snapping there. Right. So that's a good sign. The only thing is now, look at this. You know, yesterday we had, had some rain, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you can see that he didn't hit this, he didn't come back and get this since the rain. They didn't reopen this. So they always rub underneath the... Yeah, the they'll always the look for an overhanging branch. You can even make a mock scrape by... You can actually attach an overhanging branch to somewhere else uh -huh. and create a mock scrape and where they'll keep coming to it and visiting. Huh. But another thing you've got here, look, you've got a thick draw, you've got it coming up here, you've got a water source, right. you've got them... These bigger bucks don't have to expose themselves. Right. So you've got everything, the potential is here. We travel all across the planet hunting and filming, and it's sad but true, we still have some of the finest deer hunting right here at home in our home state of Illinois. Yes, you heard us right, we live in Illinois, and we hardly get a chance to hunt here much, but we're not complaining. This state has some giant deer, and let me tell you, we have a lot of deer. Being in the right place at the right time, you can rattle in the biggest buck of your life or see more deer than you ever imagined. No matter what you heard, it ain't easy hunting. There aren't bucks behind every tree. And with the 
onslaught of press our state has gotten, it sure has made it tougher for non-residents to get tags. But Illinois deer hunting is still growing and better than ever. And with this being right out our back door, you just might imagine we have a lot of fun here. Thanks to our conservation department, our deer herd is stronger than ever. And we are excited about the deer hunting future in our home state. Always hear that cliche, bucks are dumb come the rut. That ain't that ain't true. The thing is, is those bucks are traveling more and they may expose themselves more because they're looking for one thing. The girls. It's as simple as that. During the rut, during that peak rut, where do you want to be? You want to be where the girls are. So where you know their central food sources are, and you can control that pressure and you don't keep bumping them off those food sources, come the rut, you know that those bucks are going to be visiting. And remember, always try to set up on that downwind side because those bucks will come in and scent check on the downwind side.
We just got done doing a rattling sequence. Four twenty-eight had two different bucks come in. This buck comes sneaking in. It's windy. We saw the one buck into our right. He was a nice buck, but all of a sudden we caught a glimpse of this buck. I mean, it happened so fast. This buck come in. He's a shooter. He come right here. He was about 32 yards out. He stopped. I took the shot. My arrow deflected. I'm not making no excuses. I thought I hit a clear shooting lane, and I deflected it. Shot down. Hit him far back, and it looked like it hit him low. The buck ran, stopped, laid down, got up. He went back over there. He's standing there. We've got to be quiet. We've got to get out of here and come in the morning and recover this deer. Unbelievable. As you saw last night, we had a great buck. We rattled him in. He came in. Everything worked out right. I had shot. I deflected off a branch. I hit him a little far back. We figured we'd let the best thing that, that we know, and that's let him sit. We glassed. We watched him. We watched him bed down. We snuck out of there at dark. We figured we'd give him six to eight hours minimum, and uh, we figured we'd get there early in the morning. We get on that track. We watched him as we watched him bed down that evening. We figured we'd find him, and lo and behold, Mother Nature took her took her to course, and we have uh, a situation that you know hunting, as in life, is just this is real. We're not gonna we're not gonna add lib anything and say hey oh yeah this is real and there it is. The coyotes ended up either kicking him up off his bed and. Gosh darn it. You know, there's, there's, the emotions when it comes to hunting is, is so, so real. It's that moment of truth that you could be the highest of high and the lowest of low. And that's what it's all about. Let's go recover our deer. Being a responsible hunter, and I did, I did shoot this deer. Even though we recovered it and the coyotes did beat us to them, you still should tag your deer.